Earlier, Doris Burke spoke with head coach Mike Brown. And uh, what did you find out, Doris? Kevin, on paper, it's hard to pick a winner in this game based solely on the two teams' statistics and records, which coach acknowledged are very comparable. Therefore, he said, it comes down to energy and effort. We'll see how this one goes. Doris, thank you so much. And any time the sort of matchup comes up on the schedule, the emotions are on display, and it should be tight. And I think the coaches will play a big role tonight, guys, because these teams are so even talent-wise. It may be a strategic move here or there that becomes the difference. Well, you know, I tend to think that the players are going to dictate and determine what happens between the lines. The coaches might have a role, but from my vantage point, it's always more the players taking care of that than the coaches. For the Cleveland Cavaliers, their last game a loss to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And one of the factors in that game was they just couldn't get to the foul line and get enough points from the free throw line to make a difference. And it gave those opposing fans a boost every time another foul shot clanked off the rim. They were letting them hear about that. And he gets it to go. Well, you look at Irving and how much success he's had early in his NBA career. I think the only thing standing between him and, and true stardom right now is health. He's just had a lot of nagging injuries. He would love to put together an injury-free season. Nice pass in here by Charlotte. Six on the shot clock. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. For Kyrie Irving, his first All-Star appearance last season, and, and just clock his second year. Well, you look at his age and what he's doing. Really, a skilled scorer and playmaker already with size and athleticism. I like his savvy too, Kevin. He's very slick in how he gets around the basketball court. Um, this kid has a chance to perhaps be an MVP caliber player in a few more years. Jack gets a screen from Verizal, and it's blocked by Tolliver. They retain possession. Take a look at the rebound totals, guys. That's plus five now on the glass. And, Steve, I don't think there's any question which team came out with more energy and enthusiasm. That's good. They can't afford to give him that kind of look. Well, it came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to fight over the top of that. Now here is Verizal, guarded by Tolliver. And Miles kicks to Verizal. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. You know, you hate to see a player have the kind of injuries uh, that Verizal has had over the last three seasons. In fact, he's only managed to play 81 games. And for Verizal, through the first month and a half of the season, Clark averaging over 14 points and 14 rebounds a game. He seemed poised for an all-star berth. Yeah, he really was on track for one. And Flash. not only did he miss the game, but he also lost a $1 million incentive in his contract if he would have made the all-star team. So that blood clot was required. He shut it down for three months, hit him in the pocketbook, too. Now his health, his injury status has got to be a concern for Cleveland. Agreed. And Jack, here we go. Outside for Miles. Blocked. Here's Flash. He's covered by Thompson. Flash. The shot's good from Flash. And look at how the hustle game has been going for Charlotte. You know, they've done a great job of getting a hand up on shooters. Actually, have gotten a lot of blocks as well, solidifying that defensive effort. And we're also seeing a lot of fast break hoops, so this team doing a nice job getting easy points. And it's Thompson with the jam. Incredible timing on the alley-oop. He absolutely hammered it down. <laughs> and that's the play we're going to remember when this game is all said and done. There's 48 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Flash passes to Tolliver. Goes back up. And he sinks the layup. And the Bobcats lead by four. Well, they've done a great job of getting into the middle of that defense and scoring in the paint. Well, and that's why they're on this run, guys. They're getting the ball inside and getting really high percentage looks. No good from Jack. Hey, I like creativity and a circus finish as much as anybody. But you better be sure you got a chance to make it. Six seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Anderson dishes to McRoberts. Out of bounds. Cleveland takes possession. The 
looking at the last game for the Charlotte Bobcats. It was a loss to the Celtics in Boston. They found themselves up against a, a hot team that night, Kevin, and they just didn't have the manpower defensively to shut them down. You know, guys, I expected a little more fight out of them than what they showed us. They never strung together any stops like they needed to. And that. This Saturday. Zeller gets the screen from McRoberts. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Anderson Verja. That is his first foul of the game. Dishes it to Zeller. Stolen by Thompson. That was an ill-advised pass to attempt. He had to know there was a man there in position for the steal. On the four for Charlotte. Flash. He's in at three. That goes out there with Kemba Walker. Then it's Zeller, and it's McRoberts in at the four. And we'll get a look at how the hustle stat game has been going for the Cavaliers. Boy, their frenetic defense has really been impressive, putting a lot of pressure on ball handlers and turning them over. The other thing they've had going for them tonight is working hard on the offensive glass. They've had a number of putbacks. That's foul number two on him. It might not warrant sitting him entirely, but, uh, you know, another one before halftime, they could... They could be in some trouble. Taylor's checked in for Charlotte. Bobcats trail by three. Walker the pass to Flash. Feeds it to Zeller. A fadeaway. And that one's good. Zeller's got his third basket of the night right there. Good job there, Kevin. Getting himself a little space on the inside. Irving with it. He had a 21-point outing in their last game against the Timberwolves in Minneapolis. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Flash passes to Parker. Hits the three-point bomb. Pargo's got six. Oh, he's going to keep banging those home if you give him that much space. Cleveland's gone one or two on three-pointers here in the second quarter so far. You know, the Cavs have been very mindful of remaining flexible in terms of the salary cap. And when you do this, you set yourself up to perhaps make a big splash in free agency at some point. And you know what's coming. They might have a chance to re-sign LeBron in 2014 with how their books look. Great looking bounce pass to set up that play. Charlotte trailing. And here's Walker. He's got six. Passes it to Zeller. That falls. Nice feed that time from Walker. Eight points for Cody Zeller. And that had been the rumor for a while. The Cavaliers looking to maybe mend some bridges and bring LeBron back in the mix when he gets free agency next year. Their books are certainly in order for it, Steve, and it might happen. Hey, you never know. I mean, nobody expected LeBron to leave in the first place, so why not give yourself an opportunity? You are in his backyard in terms of LeBron's hometown. So I like what the Cavs have done. They've added young talent, but they've maintained flexibility just in case. Well, let's take a look now at some numbers for Anderson Verja. Great year for him last year. Last year averaged 14 points a game, 14 rebounds, and three assists. And with numbers like that, he's setting a pace for himself that's going to be very hard to maintain, if only because he's really had stretches like this in the past. But, Steve, I really think this is a player that he can be all the time, quite honestly. I mean, I don't see this as a fluke. He's got that kind of ability. Catching up on the changes for Charlotte. Jefferson comes in for Zell. And it's Henderson for Gennaro Parker. Couldn't convert, but nice little two-man game there. And it wouldn't surprise me to see them go back to that the next trip. Pass to Flash. Out to Taylor. There's the triple. But they'll get another chance. Thompson with the block. And so it looks like the Bobcats will retain possession here. A look here at last year in the NBA where the Bobcats rank. Sixth in blocks. Eighth and fewest turnovers per game. As far as free throw shooting as a team goes, not a strong suit. Top 20 in the league. A little bit of work to be done there. 
And what really stands out is the blocks for me because uh, that's a team that really dominated the paint area. And when they were on top of their game, they were very physical. And they fronted the post a lot, forced some difficult shots at the rim. And due to their length and their size, they were able to block a lot of shots down there. He was the first one to react to that miss. Excellent anticipation on his part. A hustle play on the putback by him. Pass to Bynum. Now Miles. And there's Andrew Bynum on the assist from Miles. Bynum's got it all tied up now for the Cavs. Charlotte's gotten into trouble with the three ball in the second quarter, only hitting one of five attempts. Out to the wing. Henderson passes to Flash. Here's Jefferson, and that's good. A nice job in the glass as they pick up two on the second effort. It was a slow start for him, but he started to take off since we hit the second quarter, guys. Outside Jack. Here's Miles. Thompson tipped back in for two. Thompson's got his second bucket tonight. Excellent timing on that tip in. That's something that makes him so good. I mean, just great timing in the air around the basket. A gift. Here's Flash. 23 points his last outing. A terrific Flash. design on the pick play, and he lays it in. Flash has got 10 points. What an impossible shot to block in the post. The defender you know, giving up so much size, there's no way. Close game as we wrap up the second quarter. Now, presented by Sprint. And it's halftime. I'm Damon Bruce. An excellent game going on at Quicken Loans Arena. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. And from high above the amber lights of downtown Cleveland. Dion Waiters and Earl Clark on the perimeter. Thompson and Verizia at the four and five. And it's Jack in at the one. So that's who's on the four for the Cavaliers. The pass to Henderson. The feed to Sessions. Five to shoot. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. You know, for a guy drafted in the second round, Ramon Sessions has carved out really an outstanding career. A smooth operator offensively. He keeps defenders off balance and has a great knack for drawing fouls. And I like the fact he knows how to use his size in getting to the rim and drawing fouls. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Burke. Well, guys, Flash in the last outing against the Celtics really lit up the floor. He ended with 23 points, and in addition to his scoring, he also came away with a season high for rebounds. He had a great game in all facets, and his coach called it a complete game of basketball. High praise to be sure, guys. All right, Doris, thank you. We played at a level that very few players are capable of playing, Clark. Yeah, I agree. I was just glad I got a chance to witness it. It's always such a special night when a player of his caliber gets so locked in and focused. And you know, in an 82-game season with so much talent, every once in a while, everything's going to click. I and mean, that was definitely the case that night. There's the dish to Sessions. Passes it to Flash. That ball's great assist by Ramon Sessions. That's 12 points for Flash. We're going back to Sessions. You know, he's got nice size for a point guard. Probably about 6'1", but uh, you know he's got good speed. He's been a productive point guard in the league. Bounced around a little bit. But one thing you know is that he will produce for you when he's out on the floor. Pass to Flash. The shot is off. And Cleveland the other way now. This time they met was in Charlotte, where they beat the Bobcats. Remember in that last matchup, they, they really snuck out a win in a close game. And it came down to a few mistakes uh, at the end. The forcing turnovers, I, I thought, was the difference. Sessions passes to Flash. He kicks to Henderson. Right at the free throw line, and he gets it to go. And the Bobcats lead by 14. 
Well, another open jump shot there. Their defense not putting up much of a fight. I don't think they're counting on turnovers to pull this one off. You'd like to have them if you can get them, Kevin. You can play aggressively. You try to get into the passing lane, but an aggressive play is a two-way street. If you don't settle down, your mistakes could be your own. Charlotte leading by 12. And Sessions kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Now the pass to Flash. There's 57 seconds left in the third quarter, and it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating over to the wing. And it's blocked by Verizal, and they force the shot clock violation. Great team for the Bobcats. Jefferson comes in for Zelda, and Taylor subbed in for Michael Kid Gilchrist. Now here is Jack. He has six. He dishes it to Bennett. He feeds it to Bynum. Here's Waiters. Rebounded by Flash. Flash has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. It's a plus five advantage for them in the rebounding category after that board. Very steady work they've been doing on the interior, no question. And that's, uh, I think, the main reason they have this lead. There's 14 seconds left in the third quarter. Screen by Jefferson. Upside Jefferson. Here's Pargo. And the three ball is good. Pargo's got nine. Well through three quarters of play. Well through three quarters of play. Down double digits. It may be difficult to overcome. And, Steve, we've got a moment here to go to our State Farm assist of the game coming on some very clever point guard play. Well, he mans that position for a reason, Kevin, because he passes the ball so well, sets up his teammates beautifully, really gets this offense into a nice rhythm. Delivering the pass important, but, but putting the pass in the right place for a shooter is, as you well know, huge. Yep, no question. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade for the fourth quarter. And Charlotte looking at who they've got. Flash in at the four spot. Kemba Walker is out there with Parker. And there's Ben Gordon. And it's Jefferson in at the five, roaming the paint. Charlotte leading by 13. Right side Jefferson. Right side Jefferson misses, and he wants that one back. Find him with a screen on Walker. It's stolen, and Pargo with the clear path to the hoop. And here's a look at what's coming up for the Bobcats. They'll be playing host to Miami for the next game. That game will be a quick pit stop before hitting the road again. Boy, that's a game you know the team would really like to take. And taking a quick look here, guys, at the hustle stats for the Bobcats. I'll tell you what, they've hit the boards hard in this one. It's led to an abundance of second-chance points. I mean, they've gotten a lot of second-chance points. And I'll tell you, the other thing that's been a factor is the transition game. They're scoring a lot of points on the fast break. Jack's shot is good. And that kind of defense is just not going to cut it. Guys, they have to get a hand in his face. Yeah. Walker the pass to Flash. On the wing, Gordon. And they call an illegal screen here. Now look at the Cavaliers' upcoming schedule. They've got the Wizards ahead of them for the next game. It's in Washington. That'll be just one game played away from home for them. Zeller is checked in for Gennaro Parker. Jack with a screen for Irving. Kicks to Bennett. Irving dishes to Bennett. Back to Irving. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. Guys, when his class came out, people thought Irving was the clear-cut number one player, but I don't think anybody saw him taking the league by storm the way he has. It's almost like he surpassed all of his expectations already. And a fun stat for Irving. He's just the fifth player, Steve, in NBA history to tally three consecutive 30-point games before his 21st birthday. It's remarkable. You know, you look at him now, at commercials, I mean, the, the, the play, the caliber of play. This guy's a rising star. Uh, you got to like his shot selection today. He set a good example for the rest of his teammates. Here's Bynum. Bennett picks the Bynum. And stolen by Gordon. 
Outside, Walker. Left side, Walker. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle on a lot of contact in. And a big improvement for Kemba Walker last season. The Cavaliers trail by 13. Irving with the ball. Dishes to Waiters. And it's blocked by Kid Gilchrist. But they recover it. Bynum kicks to Irving. That's good, and it's Bynum with the assist. Bynum's got four assists now tonight. They didn't get a chance to knock one down in the first. But the defense left him a look, and he nailed it. He'll make them pay when he's open. And for Walker, better shooting percentages, Clark, from every distance last season. And you always love to see that kind of improvement, Kevin, by player efficiency rating, the eighth best point guard in the league. Now, I don't like to get too enamored with those numbers, but there's some substance to those. And it's out of bounds. The Bobcats will take it the other way. Charlotte leading by 10. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. Passes it to Flash. And good. Got the English that time as it falls. Flash has got four points now in the quarter. The mid-range jumper becomes a pretty high percentage shot for him when he has that kind of space. Bennett kicks to Waiters. Bennett the pass to Waiters. Feeds it to Bynum. Yeah, that one put them over the limit, and if they're not careful, this could turn into a parade at the free throw line. Tell you what, I don't know of any players that like to miss time during an NBA season, but no player especially wants to miss time because of a bowling accident. One of the bigger head scratchers last season was Bynum's absence because of knocking over some bowling pins. They set the pick. The kick out to Walker. Bynum with the block. Now here's Waiters. He's guarded by Kid Gilchrist. Kid Gilchrist with the steal. And it's the Bobcats on the break. Walker dishes to Jefferson. Nice D from Bennett. And for Bynum, that setback with his knee suffered bowling. You don't normally think of bowling as hazardous. Well, it depends how you play. Personally, well, I've, I've always felt bowling can be very physical, but I, I play a different style. I know you what probably do, just roll the ball down do you, the lane. What do, what do you mean different, what do you mean different style? I, well, I attack the pins. I attack. I'm aggressive as a bowler. I, you're probably just like, you just take two hands and just kind of oh, yeah. gently roll the ball. Of course, you want to yeah. my bet. <laughs> Stolen by Waiters. And here's the fast break. Irving gets a screen from Bennett. Bynum kicks to Waiters. That's good, and it's Bynum with the assist. Bynum's got five assists in the game. They can't afford to give him that kind of look. Well, it came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to fight over the top of that. Jefferson sinks that one from the post. Jefferson's got 19 points. The Cavaliers trail by nine. And here's Irving. Bennett setting the pick for Irving. And the rebound goes to the Bobcats. Flash has got rebound number five here tonight. Outside Jefferson. And there's the three-second call, this one on the defense. And he shows the focus there, nails the technical. Can you believe the job they're doing at the foul line since halftime? I mean, they've been perfect so far. Yeah, sometimes it's contagious. Everybody starts to get comfortable and relaxed, and everything goes in the hoop. Ben Gordon's check in for Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Here's Flash, just five on the clock. Drills the elbow jumper. Flash has got six in the quarter. That jump shot has been a dimension of this game where they've had a clear advantage. Yeah, they've been pulling up and watching them go down. Irving gets a screen from Bennett. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle on a lot of contact there. It's on L. Jefferson. Well, you know, this last offseason, the Bobcats announced their intention to change the team name to the Hornets, reclaiming the name of the original Charlotte franchise that left for New Orleans in 2002. 
And just like New Orleans chose a name, the Pelicans, that has local significance, the Hornets, a historical reference to Charlotte's rebellious fighting spirit during the American Revolution. Steve, you just tell me about this. Fascinates you. It does. I'm an American history buff, Kevin, and I'm also an NBA history buff. And going back to the Hornets in Charlotte originally, they sold out for nine straight seasons. So the Hornets' nickname absolutely belongs in Charlotte. Pass to Flash. Down low. Charlotte moving the ball around. Free throw line jump shot. Not enough on that one as it misses. The Cavaliers trail by seven. Bynum sets a screen for Irving. There's the feed to Bennett. Now Irving. Bobcats with the rebound. At one point, they led by 16. Flash passes to Walker. Here's Flash. He's guarded by G. Right side Jefferson. And he connects on the jumper. The screen did the trick. Jefferson's got six here in this quarter. Boy, that was a rugged screen set there, fellas, and the defense didn't even try to go through that one. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Thanks, Kevin. I got a chance to hear what Mike Brown was saying to the team. He is not pleased with the score and implored them to try to make a push right now, saying, we don't have time, fellas. If we can't make a dent soon, I'll have to pull the plug. Pretty blunt, Kevin. Back to you. All right, Doris, thank you very much. Offensive rebound. That one's good, and the Bobcat lead is cut down now to just seven on the basket from Bennett. Very nice pickup of the offensive rebound, and once he gets his hands on it, you know it's going back up and back in. Walker the pass to Flash. This now to Jefferson. Outside, Walker, and there's the call on Kyrie Irving. That will be foul number five on him. Walker the pass to Flash. Back to Walker. Shot clock at six. Here's Zeller. Here's the three. He's tried to get it going, but the shots just have not dropped for him today. He's not exactly striking them from deep. He had one three ball in the first half. Still bagels in the second. And that's out of bounds. Cleveland will retain possession. And the Cavaliers call time here. They trail by seven. 144 left in the fourth quarter. 144 left in the fourth quarter. The it goes, and the Bobcat lead is cut to just five on the basket from Kyrie Irving. A minute 42 left to play in the final quarter. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. I was able to listen in on what Steve Clifford was going over with his team. He went over the offensive plan and that it hinges on running things through Jefferson. That is one part of this game that Coach isn't particularly happy about. He wants him taking on more responsibility when they've got the ball. He also wants to see a patient offense, work for the shot, move the ball around, and as he told them, quote, if you don't see a good shot, find someone who does. Guys, we'll see how Coach's direction pays off as this one winds down. Kevin? All right, Doris, thank you very much. 110 left in the fourth. Walker the pass to Flash. Inside to Jefferson. Connects! Well, give credit where credit is due. A terrific assist inside. Cleveland's gone three or four from downtown here in the fourth. Irving dishes to Bennett. Irving gets to Bynum. And that basket is going to count. Goaltending the official call. Ooh, he's playing hard, but you got to play smart, too. Get there too late, and that's a big whistle. The Bobcat shooting in this game, 45%. We can probably expect to see him slow it down now. Yeah, you got the lead. Burn some clock here. Smart move. Yep. Boy, he's been locked in. Anytime he's gotten an even halfway decent look, he's knocked it down. And I think they'd be staring at a big deficit if they hadn't gotten the lights out shooting he's given. And so they foul intentionally. Here's the 
James Walker, and there's the call on Kyrie Irving. And so he's picked up his final foul, and he will sit for the rest of this game. Jared Jack has checked in for Irving. And so both reasons are good, and it's a seven-point game. Perfectly done at the stripe there, and that brings their lead up to an even more comfortable level. Six-second difference between shot and game plan. Jack passes to Bynum. Can't get it to go. The Bobcats shooting 44% in the fourth. The offense with some ups and downs. Here's Flash, defended by Jack, and Flash. he gets it to go. They got on this roll a while ago, and they just haven't looked finished yet. They're going to make sure about this win. Yeah, that's how you close out a game, Steve. Zeller dishes to Jack. Let's it go with a three. No good. So it's Charlotte picking up the win. Both teams played well, but these guys had the edge. Yeah, I think so. They were just steak knife sharp. Very on top of their game here. Well said. And now let's catch up with Doris Burke, who's standing by on the sideline. Doris. Kevin, thank you. I'm here with Al Jefferson. And Al, obviously, this team got to that. Coach, you endured a very impressive game from Flash. What did you think stood out about his performance tonight? I thought, uh, obviously, uh, the difference in the game. I thought he stepped up and, and he made plays. He imposed his will on the game, and, and, and he made plays, uh, especially when it counted in the fourth quarter. Oh, that's great. 